Cure and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and this bright orange thing behind us is Lexus's first ever electric car. It's the new UX300e. That's right. I don't know if you want to call it a bright orange thing. But anyway, you're right. It's the brand that's so synonymous with hybrid has actually taken the next step and gone fully electric. Come, let's take a look at this. Now, when I say synonymous with hybrids, I really do mean it. Basically, in the 15 years they've been doing hybrids, they've done almost 2 million of them. So not only are they good at that, but also they're really well sought after. They've chosen the UX as being their sort of first step into the all-electric market. And essentially, this is their bold move to make sure that they can really... Uh, New Zealand's going into a zero emissions um, quota, actually the world is. And so this is, like I said, their first bold move into it. We've already done the UX as far as a review, you can check it out, but so I won't bore you too much with that. But looking around the vehicle here, the headlights are now triple LED, so you can see the one, two, three. Still got this nice sort of razor sharp LED uh, DRL side of things going on. And also you'll see around here, there's actually the indicators are uh, stuck into here. Still comes with that nice hour shape or hourglass shaped grill. It really is, you're either going to like it or you're going to not like it. It's grown on me, put it that way. But everyone's making a big deal about their grills and Lexus are no different. Round the side, our review model comes in what's known as Blazing Chameleon. Means nothing, but it's such a cool name. Looking around, the wheels are now 18 inch, which is part of this uh, upgraded model, of which basically does bear all the fruit, which includes the likes of these roof rails, sunroof, basically color coded dual mirrors and everything's really here in this vehicle the other thing is if you look closer under here you'll see the battery pack which is really where all this is hidden and it really does sit quite low i'd be a little bit concerned going near the uh, sleeping policeman but you know i'm sure they've well thought out it is a crossover so it does sit a little bit higher the other thing to point out is the fact of this electric badge which really does and emphasize the fact that this is a fully electric vehicle. Around the rear, a roofline spoiler, obviously with the stop light and a wiper blade, always good. You've got these really funky lights here that uh, basically have a really sharp area down here. The blue Lexus sign showing you that it's fully electric. Also the 300E with the E standing obviously for electric. The Lexus badging and some more of the garnish down here. And it's a kicker tailgate which opens up to 310 litres of boot space, up from 268 in the hybrid. So more room here. Let's take a look under the bonnet. No additional storage space, as with some of the other brands, but what you do get is a big hefty electrical motor. This is powered by a 54 kilowatt hour battery, which we'll basically talk about the charging in a minute. And what it gives you is 150 kilowatts of power and 300 newton meters of torque. Now, what that means in reality is the fact that this is the fastest out of the UX range. So it's faster than the petrol driven one or the hybrid one. And zero to 100 is 7.5 seconds, even though the extra weight from the battery pack is 160 kilograms. And we all know what 160 kilograms looks like. There are two methods of charging. Both are at the back. So let's go and take a look at that. This side is the home charging option. So basically plug in from either your trickle charge or from your wall box. The other side, a Chatamo connection, which basically at a fast charge will take 80 minutes to get to a fully charge, which I believe is around about, well, Lexus are saying 360. We've only really got up to 300 as far as kilometer range. Speaking of something that's pretty slow to charge, Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there. Now, I'm, while I might be a little bit slow today, um, I have had a, a coffee, so I'm recharged now just like this Lexus. And speaking of things that are charged up, well, there's plenty of spaces around here for your technology. Of course, Lexus is a very tech thinking brand, if you like. So to charge your phone, well, there's a space just there, a wireless charger for your phone. And right next to it, there's a 12 volt socket, which pops up like that. That's pretty cool. You also get a couple of USBs underneath this armrest. And the cool thing about this armrest is it's double hinged. So you can do it this way or you can do it that way. A cool but gimmicky kind of thing if you like. 
something that's not gimmicky are these seats, which are quilted in a, a Japanese traditional way called sashiko. So as you can see, the stitching yeah. around here is very unique and specially made by Lexus's master craftsmen in Japan. Something else that's specially crafted is this dashboard, which is made in a, a traditional Japanese architectural style called Engawa. So the way it, it sculpts around the driver and it's sort of stepped down in three different levels, it's all very, very much designed with a lot of thought in mind, which is nice, of course. We like car manufacturers to think about us. Lexus has also kept the buttons, which is a nice touch, of course. So all the air conditioning controls are long here and they're they these nice sort of switches that feel like an airplane or some sort of, you know, performance machine. And there's some more buttons down the middle here. Your audio is controlled by this mouse sort of infotainment control thing over here. And of course you get Lexus's famous mouse pad here, which controls that infotainment screen. So let's take a look at that. As you can see there, the infotainment screen, well, it's not a touch screen. You might be able to see my fingerprint from earlier when I tried to touch it. It's operated by this mouse pad down below and um, it's basically the same as the the petrol on hybrid UX system. So there isn't actually a specific menu for your electrification or electric heads up display. So if you flick through there, um, that's all you get. So uh, to find the nearest charging station or vice versa, you'll need to use your phone for that, which is a little bit inconvenient. But in terms of convenience sakes, they have made up for the fact that it does have an analog clock actually, which looks quite beautiful there in typical Lexus fashion. So it's nice that they are keeping some of their traditional design elements while also moving forward. So while there's not much electrical information on the infotainment screen there, there is some on the digital dashboard. So let's take a look at that. Behind this leather steering wheel, you have two paddle shifters. And of course, they don't change the gears. In fact, they adjust the regenerative braking Ahead of that, you have Lexus's digital dashboard. In the middle, there's an analog style display for the speed. And then of course, for the balance, whether you're using power or regenerative braking. And then of course, the the drive or drive setting rather is in the middle and on a, a weird sort of pedestal thing. It, it, the display is very, very uniquely Lexus, if I should say. The range is on the bottom and then it tells you the range according to whether you're using air conditioning or you're not using air conditioning. So we found that you lose about 30, km, 30 kilometers of range by using air conditioning. On the left side, it's got the average display. So it tells you how many kilowatt hours you've been using per 100 Ks and how many kilometers you're doing and various other pieces of information that you need to know. And you can keep flicking through by using the buttons up here on the steering wheel. So. Nice and easy and plenty of information in front of you there. It's also got a almost fuel style gauge on the right here, which shows you how much charge you've got left. And then a weird display up the top there that tells you the model of the car that you're driving. And that we haven't been able to get that to change, which is a little bit unique if you should say. Now you saw the way the battery is mounted underneath the car. So let's jump in the back quickly and see if it changes the space in there. As you can see, the battery has made things a little bit tight in the back here. This front seat is set up for my driving position. I'm just under six feet and sitting in the back here, my feet are kind of squashed down the bottom and my knees are basically up against the, the driver's seat. So not all that convenient. Certainly sitting three people across here is gonna be a bit tough. Another thing that you notice in the back here is the lack of storage space. So you do get a pocket behind the passenger seat there, but there's no door bins, there's no cubbies um you are missing cup holders in the middle there though you have some over here and at least to make up for that you do have the rear heated heated seats and a couple of charging ports down there so they have thought of the i guess the adult backseat passengers but it's not so child friendly shall we say speaking of child's play let's go and take it for a drive and have a bit of fun Okay, so the Lexus UX 300e, it is their first fully electric vehicle and you know what a great way to start with something that's as popular as their towny sort of crossover 
a size vehicle. The UX was already pretty good, um, particularly when you've got the petrol and the hybrid version. Well, the hybrid version was great. This has just enhanced it and it's given it more room, more power, more speed. You know, who doesn't want all that? That's true. And the UX, of course, celebrated a big milestone for Lexus. It was the very first crossover that Lexus made. And then they turned it in, into an even more significant car by making it the first ever Lexus fully electric car. And it's, I guess it's more than just, you know, a petrol or hybrid car that's just been retrofitted with some batteries. It does feel like they have put some thought into making it a usable, livable electric car. Yeah, look, I think the first thing we do have to cross off is the battery size. It isn't the biggest battery in the category, but what they've done is they've given it plenty of range. I mean, 300, well, from what we've seen, 300 kilometers of range, which is pretty hefty considering Kiwis sort of commute roughly 30 or 40 kilometers per day, which is fine. But also they've gone for a smaller battery because it's given more room for everything else. So it doesn't, hasn't encroached on the space of a compact compact-ish size crossover vehicle. So, you know, full kudos for that, really. And the batteries themselves are mounted underneath the car. So while that does worry um, drivers slightly because some speed breakers and things do feel a little bit daunting, so far we haven't had a problem. So while it may seem scary, it's actually fine. I'm sure the Lexus engineers have done plenty of research on that optimum ride height, if you like. Yeah, that huge scratch noise was, I think, uh, my son in the back rather than anything else. <laughs> what? Now, there has been a lot of talk about the battery range not fulfilling its potential as far as it goes, or sort of not being bang on. So far, we started off on 267, I think it was. Uh, when, when you've got the air conditioning on, it dropped from 300 down to 267. And we've done 36 Ks and we've got 230 kilometers left. So actually, as far as it goes, it's one kilometer out, not bad. So it is accurate in telling you how much range you've got, but Lexus claimed to have 360 kilometers on a full charge. We only managed 300, and then we lost about 33 more by using the air conditioning. So it is a little bit worrying how fast that range drops initially, but then after that, it, it holds itself really well. And Lexus say as well that after 10 years of, of use that they expect the battery to hold 80% of its charge. And we certainly believe them on that because they have been doing hybrid batteries for 15 to 18 years now. Yeah, and also a top tip, we changed the heating and or the heated seats or the cooling seats, which this happens happens to have, and didn't make any difference to the, air, the, the range. So switch your AC off, put your heated seats on, jobs are good in. Top tip. The big talking point here as well with the cabin is, of course, just the refinement. I mean, it's so quiet in here on rougher motorway roads and around corners and things. You just can't hear much road noise at all or, you know, much wind noise or anything. It's really well insulated, almost too well, in fact, where down low, you know, you don't really hear much feedback from the car. And especially when you're accelerating as well, there's just a, a whoosh noise as you cut through the air. There's no no electronic feedback true the cornering while you're on the subject of cornering is a little bit loose um they have put new dampers on the back to give it more performance but it's a little bit skittish when you start to push it a little bit harder into the corners I don't know around town you won't really do it and most people won't really bother but it does get a little bit loose but you know again that's why we're here to test it for you the other thing on the on the subject of cabin the materials are recyclable the I kind of like the old school analog clock I think that's really good and it's a great place for me to still break or dust off my CDs and be able to play them and I must say the Mark Levinson stereo is great full pelt doesn't distort really really excellent yep definitely and um, we're pretty lucky in New Zealand that the UX comes well specced with that audio system navigation you know a sunroof and the full suite of luxuries if you like and um, for the price then it definitely makes 
it makes sense seeing the the kind of luxury items you have in here so it shows that lexus have you know not just spent all their money on battery development and things they have thrown in plenty of goodies and still held up to the fact that lexus is a proper luxury brand and this does feel like a luxury car it is for a crossover where they usually sort of they scrimp a lot or a lot of car manufacturers scrimp a lot this is actually very refined i couldn't agree more visibility wise same as the ux plenty of visibility around and you know nice big door mirrors and nice big re uh, rear view mirror up here and plenty of yeah plenty of visibility around and also your different driving modes you man uh, going from eco which we've spent most of the time in to normal the throttle changes and it picks up nicely and then of course sport where it changes some of the screen on here and <laughs> nice v it is it does it can push your head back quite nicely 7.5 seconds zero to 100 is not bad for essentially what is a towny car and it's got 150 kilowatts of power so that's like hot hatch kind of territory so it can you know it can have performance when you need it to be and surprisingly when you do change the drive modes from normal to sport or eco it doesn't actually change the range on the dashboard but i'm guessing that once you do change it into sport that your range will probably go down faster than in eco and sure i mean if you are going to boot it around and try to race people off the lights it will drop reasonably well from there especially if your aircon's on full your seats on heated and stuff like that but you know be wise be ev wise and you know you've got virtually a week's worth of commute or you know a nice long range after that just a little bit of a slower charge but you know we all hate getting up in the morning so i don't know getting charged is going to be an issue anyway so there you have it lexus's new all electric ux 300e really is a i actually like it it's not stupidly fast it's not stupidly long ranged it's not it's not any of that but it just ticks all the boxes when it comes to luxury and refinement and literally you know plenty of range to keep you going on a regular basis it feels really well built it feels like a proper lexus even though it's fully electric although it could do with a little more range but that's just me and it really is the pick of the bunch as far as the UX range goes, I would say. And also, the government's going to give you in New Zealand a clean card discount for it as well. Bonus. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. It is around here somewhere. Just there. Anyway. And see you on the next one.